evening and welcome to the 8-8-2018 uh, uh, meeting of the Civil Service Commission. May we have roll call, please? Commissioner Mnookin? Yes. Commissioner Gazarian? Here. Commissioner McCarley? Present. Commissioner Devine? Here. Sheriff Kerry? Here. What's next? Minutes for the meeting of July 11, 2018. Moved uh, to approve the second, second reading. Was there any objection? Okay. Unanimously approved. I think I was not here. Oh, you were not here? No. Okay. There's one abstention. Any, any, anything else? Okay. What's next? Oral communications. No car. What's next? <coughs> Recruitment and examination report. Mr. Chair, members of the commission, uh, this item is our, our uh, recruitment status report. This indicates the, uh, the current work workload relative to recruitment, has the filing periods, the exam dates and such. As you can see, uh, uh, still remains pretty active, pretty busy, 64 processes in various phases. Um, the work keeps rolling in. Um, anyhow, the uh, the uh, report does indicate everything we're currently working on. If you have any questions on any of these recruitments, we'd be happy to try and answer them. Uh, otherwise, this is a note and file item. I see that Sean Chavez doesn't have much to do, actually. So maybe you can assign some more stuff to him. All right, uh, any questions? What's next? Eligible is established. Uh, Mr. Bedoya. Mr. Chair, member of the commission, uh, again, this is uh, our report on eligible lists that, that have been established since our last uh, meeting. Um, as I always say, this is sort of the culmination of our recruitment process where we show you the lists that have been established and whether they're open, promotional, total applications received, and then the ultimately in the far right column you see the number who make it onto the list. I uh, continually point out the difference between the number of applications we receive and those who actually do make the list. It's an indication of our uh, of uh, the process that uh, our, our candidates are required to go to in order to get a job here, particularly those open recruitments where you see numbers of uh, close to 100 or over 100 applications, and then you have a, a list with, uh, with uh, uh, as few as two people. So uh, again, it's an indication of, of the fact that uh, we do have a lot of applicants for the job, but uh, trying to identify those who are best qualified and Meet, meet our needs is uh, can be challenging. So uh, again, this too is a uh, note and file report, but if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer those for you. Any questions? Okay, what's next? Class specification for approval, yard attendance. Let's do it. Doyle. Okay. What I said? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say it. Uh, Doyle. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this is a class specification for approval. It's a yard attendant. It's a position in our public works department. Um, this uh, specification does have uh, some significant changes to it. Um, this position, it, 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 it's been around a long time. It used to be sort of a night watchman type of thing at the, uh, the public works corporate yard, but it's really evolved into a more of a first responder for all kinds of uh, various calamities that occur during the off hours and uh, the individual or individuals in this job uh, are really a, a, an important component of any after hours uh, things that uh, that occur at the yard and they're sent out quite a bit to various uh, public works facilities throughout the uh, throughout the uh, the city dealing with you know things that occur in parking lots and bridges and you know, dealing with sewers, storm drains, uh, storage tanks, uh, fleet issues, and you know, if there's a windstorm, this is usually the person who's the first one out there to identify, you know, uh, what you know needs to be. If it's branches need to be taken away, or if a tree needs to be cut down, or if a crew needs to be called in, this individual it happens very often. Uh, but uh, um, the discussion that we we had addressed at the previous meeting focused on, you know, why would this happen? What are the reasons for it? And typically, at least uh, of late, it, uh, it would involve a situation where there's either hiring freeze or some type of budget situation where something that we would have started, uh, we had to stop uh, in the middle and, and, and repeal the, the certification and, and no longer proceed as, as was originally planned. There are other occasions where um, we go through a, an eligible list and we either can't get hold of people or 
uh, we, we get down to the end of the list and people are waiving the position or no longer interested, that sort of thing. In some of those cases, we might do it as well. Um, but those are some of the, some of the, the reasons that uh, we had, we had uh, discussed. Um, like I said, that doesn't happen very often. Um, we did do a little additional research on this uh, uh, following that meeting. Uh, I actually got Ms. Barpetian involved and she read it. She, she uh, uh, tried to give an interpretation of it and uh, um, I actually spoke to one of my predecessors on what this, this is actually for and, and it, I think we discovered the intent of this provision is a little different than what, what I had always assumed in my many years here with the city. And, and what it involves is uh, apparently it used to be common uh, to have multiple departments uh, more or less competing for uh, a list once a, a, a list gets established. Um, if one department was taking too long, um, the other department could solicit the HR director to then repeal that certification so they could get hold of that list and proceed with their recruitment. And again, this, this goes back to the days where we would create these big generic lists for position like a customer service representative or administrative analyst and we'd have three or four departments waiting to use that list and essentially if one department took too long or was indecisive about it, uh, another department that was waiting for it could solicit the HR director to say, um, hey, you know, we want to proceed, you know, it's, we'd like to take our turn at, at getting this list, so therefore can you repeal the certification? And the HR director would either tell that department, hey, hurry up, make a selection, or sorry, you know, you took too long, I'm gonna give, I'm taking that certified requisition from your department and giving it to another department. So if you actually read the language of the, of the section, it, it makes a whole lot of sense. So uh, again, it's not that common uh, anymore that we have multiple departments competing for these lists, we, and we just don't have these long generic lists. A lot of them are, are more specialized, uh, but uh, anyway, we think this is the, uh, the, uh, uh, the intent of, of that specific provision. When we discussed this at the last meeting, there was a lot of discussion about you know, the commission saying that you know, this, this really shouldn't happen once we do establish a list. You know, by golly, we should follow through with it. Those people who were certified are entitled to some consideration, and I certainly agree with that. Um, I think there was a recommendation by the commission that uh, uh, either the uh, you know, the commission have to approve this process, or that at minimum, uh, when we do repeal a certification, um, that at least uh, the commission be noticed or notified if we have to do that, and certainly willing to recommend that as we proceed with these, uh, with these uh, um, amendments uh, from at the next step. So with that, uh, if you have any questions, uh, again, I'd be tr happy to try uh, and answer them for you. Go ahead. Um, I just want to make sure I, I understand this correctly based on the scenario that you were explaining. So let's say um, what we just approved, the utility welder. Um, if this position uh, gets uh, when we get to the point of the list, what other department, for example, what other department would be fighting for the set? Uh, am I understanding that correctly? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioner Manukin, it's probably not a great example because that's only going to be um, utilized in one department. But if we had a, a position such as uh, administrative analyst or even civil engineer, where you might have it in a couple different departments, um, uh, you'd have a list, and again, um, we believe the intent of this provision was uh, if one department was uh, taking too long or the process was getting bogged down, the other department could solicit to have that list repealed, and, uh, and the, li the department that was waiting could then proceed with their Take that, that Okay, got it. Thank you. Mr. Gazari? Thank you. Um, you mentioned, uh, Mr. Doyle, that uh, Barbetian tried to give an interpretation, and I take it she did give an interpretation upon which you relied. Uh, and uh, in recollecting uh, the concern of this commission several months ago, which seems to be uh, 
appropriately recorded uh, on page two of our, uh, of our package today, on page two of the item. The Commission as a whole felt that individuals who successfully attain a position on an eligible list and are certified to the department should receive appropriate consideration for the opening and not have that employment opportunity eliminated. Now that was our concern, correct? <clears throat> and the research, which uh, I, I take it Ms. Barbetian conducted, found that the primary intent of the repeal of certification provision had more to do with the amount of time city departments held onto eligible lists while other departments were waiting to also utilize the same list. Uh, so I think that alleviates any concern of this commission because our concern, particularly my concern, uh, I can speak as to my concern in, in the context of the overall concern, was when there's an eligible list of someone uh, you know, to become a police officer or a firefighter or to be promoting uh, to a promotional list, uh, that this concept of uh, the appointing authority who held the certification for at least 10 working days without making an appointment would then make all the efforts of someone who got themselves on that list be wasted by a discretionary, and that is what this appears to be, a discretionary director of human resources may repeal. Clearly, I, I have seen you exercise your discretion, and I have, I have not, I don't recall an abuse of that. Um, but this is not that situation where you're going to say, well, they didn't promote within 10 days, I'm going to repeal the list. This, as you have now clearly explained, at least to me, is that those <coughs> specifications or classifications that can be utilized by more than one department within the city, if one department does not act on it in reasonable time, and you then may, in the exercise of your uh, discretion, grant them an extension of time, but they still don't. Or you may think that an extension of time is so much time to act and did not. <clears throat> you, then may, you then may repeal the certification. Would you repeal it or would you then really, as the research transfer. has shown, transfer it to another department to make use of it? Commissioner Gazarian, technically it would be repealed because it, uh, the, the certification goes with the position it's possessed, it's, the, it's owned by that department that has ah. the opening. So that one has to be sort of pulled back and okay. then the other department moves in and gets the three names and then makes the appointment. So in reality, it is shifting it or transferring it to an, a different department. So it's repeal and replace, re reassign essentially. It's not repeal, you guys are all out of luck, or right. ladies are out of luck, yes. and we're gonna now start a new recruitment process all over again right. for that multi-agency utilizable to be utilized position. Right. Uh, I'm satisfied, thank you. Okay. Mr. Chair, um, I look at this and I'm intrigued by the term certification because I believe it carries a bit more significance than we have had the opportunity to discuss. Uh, there are certain prerequisites to the certification process, and that includes the identification of those employees, for instance, who have been laid off, who are seeking reinstatement, and that is prioritized. And that is part of the process of identifying eligible candidates based upon both our civil service rules and our collective bargaining agreements with our workforce. And if I understand it correctly, uh, that prioritization begins with those uh, employees uh, who have been laid off, That's who correct. are at the top of the uh, list of candidates, and at the lowest happen to be those individuals who have competed for the position, gone through the entirety of the application process, and you have found them eligible. But that certification becomes real critical. It's not merely a rubber stamp. Um, and then the second part of that certification process that becomes, uh, I think, quite valuable both to the candidate and to the appointing authorities happens to be the notification to the candidates that they are, in fact, identified as eligibles and most probably will receive uh, interview notice. Now what you've installed here, and I, I, I 
tend to believe that it's really a matter of just interpreting language a wee bit differently, is you have put a 10-day suspense period in which the appointing authority has an opportunity to work through these lists. And in some, when you begin to look at it that way, and I agree with fellow commissioners, one, it puts the burden on the appointing authority to move forward, and secondly, it maintains the freshness of the list because within uh, the civil service context, it could, if this type of uh, provision, uh, Section 7, did not exist, it theoretically could occur that a certified list could continue for months, years, in which no action whatsoever would be taken, not necessarily a bad thing or maybe uh, difficult for those candidates who happen to find themselves on a list for which no selections have been made, but it goes to the freshness of the list, because a list that consists of dynamic candidates, those seeking reinstatement, laid off, and those who have competed successfully, and one year later the list still exists, that list is qu quite frankly obsolete. So there is a mechanism, and I think that there is sufficient discretion given you as a director of human resources and, and here's where I would seek correction, to reinstate that certification, extend or reinstate that certification. Now, if I'm, would that be correct that, the, um, that you have the uh, discretion to reinstate? Uh, I would say yes. Ten days, let's say we send it to Public Works. Yes. And the director has the list uh, for whatever, transportation director. No selection is made. And so while it's not automatic, your office, you have the authority, you have the discretion to decertify. Fine. I, and it's interesting statistically how many times you ever did that. But then this is not a session in which we're seeking that level of interest. But a week later, uh, Director of Public Works dials you up, emails you and says, I'm now prepared. And you would have the ability then to recertify. It is, a, is it a process, a pen and ink process in which you recertify or just say, here, take the list and go for it? Mr. Chair, Commissioner McCarley, uh, it, it, I can't imagine a scenario where after 10 days I, I would have repealed a certification if someone, if some department is taking too long. Um, if they are taking uh, a long time, there would probably be a call for myself or one of my staff to that department simply asking, you know, what are you waiting for? And, and truly, I mean, we, we are, you saw the list of recruitments. We have lots of things going on. For us to engage in a, in a recruitment process, go through, go through all the testing, create a list, and have it sit, you know, have that list sit uh, uh, with no action taken would be you know, quite problematic to me as the HR director and certainly to those candidates who, uh, who are on the list. So it, in all likelihood, uh, uh, there would not be a, a repealing, even if it had gone beyond 10 days or even 20 or 30 days. Sometimes it does take a while to make that decision. Um, but uh, following the, the certification process, you are correct. Candidates are notified by our office. Uh, and. Uh, the appointing authority, that department is charged with contacting each of those uh, candidates. They set up what's known as a final hiring interview. They interview them and they may have other, other things they want them to do. They may want to see a writing sample. They may want to see previous performance evaluations. Um, you know, we leave it pretty open uh, as long as they, everything they're asking of those candidates is appropriate and job related and non-discriminatory. But uh, we give them sufficient time to, to take action. And uh, again, I can't think of any scenario uh, other than if another department were waiting on a specific list to where I would even consider repealing a cert. If I may ask one question and one final comment. Uh, do you feel that this section says the seven is of value to you as the Director of Human Resources? I, uh, Commissioner McCarley, I, I would say yes. Uh, again, it's not something that happens very often, but I appreciate uh, the comment. Thank you, sir. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, I was wondering why this can't be simplified, and instead of making it, uh, you know, a job for the human resources director to think about, we say that after if there are competing departments for a candidate's on a list, 
in that instance, uh, the certification shall be repealed in X number of days, whatever you feel would be a reasonable thing. That way there's no discretion needed on your part. It's in there that after, and also it gives notice to the uh, appointing authority, the first one that gets it, that uh, you know they can't sit on it forever and ever. And so after so many days, they know they're going to give up that those candidates, and those candidates know that after a certain number of days, if they're not selected, they're going to be looked at by another department. And go ahead. So that would be my suggestion, or wanting to know why that wouldn't work. I, I, Commissioner Bayan. Well, let, let the as to that issue. As to that issue, uh, it's. Uh, Thank you. Two things. As to, as to Commissioner Devine's uh, suggestion, it seems to me that as Section 7 is currently uh, written, you may repeal it if they've held it for at least 10 working days. So what I understand my fellow Commissioner to be saying is, <coughs> say it will be repealed absolutely mandatorily, to which I would, I would very respectfully disagree because Human condition and human factors cannot be taken into account by just putting a blanket date. I mean, if you're going to put a blanket date, you may. What, what is that blanket date going to be? Thirty days? Well, I, days? that's what I said. I, I said that's got an X number of days, and the human uh, Matt would have to figure that out, or there would have to be some reasonable number. I agree. Ten days is certainly not a. It's not. A good, no, it's not. Right. But uh, you know, if it's thirty days, I'm thinking in terms also. Of, the candidates that are waiting to be exactly. employed. And uh, if it's kind of a nebulous out there, you know, the appointing authority, the first one takes 15, 20, 30 days, and then the director of human resources has the option, well, let's give them another 15 days and or maybe another 40 days. And so those employees are at a disadvantage then because there are other departments that they may get picked up immediately. Unless, unless those employees prospective employees who sought employment. They sought employment as to the particular appointing authority that was seeking solicit or soliciting that employment. So uh, hypothetically, if I was one such prospective employee and I wanted to work in the Department of Water and, what do they call it? Department of Water and Power? Water and Power. Water and Power. But then I find myself all of a sudden working for Department of Parks and Recreation. Uh, I may not like that. <laughs> You, know, well, you always have the option to <laughs> withdraw your name. Uh, you don't. You know that doesn't mean you're going to work for that department. Those three names go to the, to the other department, and it's the same way. And you can always take your name off the list. But I would think that after, and again, 10 days is certainly not reasonable. But I th would think after 30, 40, I don't know, Mr. Doyle would have to give us advice on that. But after a set number of days, the employees know that it's not going to languish there for. Uh, an unreasonable number of days. Here, here's where I'll meet with you, Commissioner Devine, in the co in the context of good faith of this discussion. Uh, I'm I'm uh, on principle opposed to setting a hard deadline because that at once does what I expressed my concern about, but also at the same time takes away any discretion of an HR director uh, and uh, turns everything into a into a cookie cutter approach of. of retention or non-retention of prospective employees. Uh, uh, I don't have a problem with the 10 days being changed. Uh, I would have a problem personally uh, to have the may be removed and have it be sub substituted with a word such as must. The HR director must repeal because that makes it uh, absolutely not subject to any discretion and there are factors that you and I and I dare say others on this Dias uh, this evening cannot possibly imagine all at once and, and uh, take measures to account for it. Uh, separate and apart from that, that that's, that's as much as I have as to that issue. Uh, I understand Mr. Um, Commissioner McCarley's concern about certification and, and, and the plight of, uh, the plight of um, laid off employees and others uh, who may uh, by virtue of a certification, have gotten on the list. But I also understood Section 7 not to be dealing with touching the certification aspect of any list, but rather addressing whether or not 
you may repeal it and reassign it. I, I heard the word decertify being used. Decertifying a list is far more different. Uh, decertifying a certification, to me, is far more different than repealing and reassigning a list. Am I missing something? I, I, I'm not sure I see the distinction between decertifying. It's not, it's not a term. Because if you, well, we I'll tell you what the distinction the, is. Okay. If you decertify a list, that means that list is no longer certified. So you cannot then take that list and give it to another appointing authority, another, another department, because that list is decertified. But if you repeal the certification as it's written from an appointing authority, that means you're saying, Department of Water and Power, I'm repealing this list as being certified as to you. You're not decertifying the list. Otherwise, how else would you be able to reassign it to another department? You wouldn't be able to reassign it. It's, to me, it's a matter of reading uh, the intent uh, w through the words of that Section 7. And to me, that appears to be the intent, repealing versus decertifying. And I do see a distinction. OK, I, I, I see what you mean now. Um, the, the, the rules don't address decertifying, but it does address the provisions for uh, canceling an, an eligibility list. and that. That's a process that can only be done by this commission unless the list goes to its full two-year duration. Uh, but uh, the commission can cancel a list prior to the right. two years. And that, I think, I think that, would, that would be a decertification. That would be a decertification, so correct. Canceling a, well, but okay. but when, I, when I see the good work done here that says the research found that the primary intent of the repeal of certification provision had more to do with the amount of time city departments held onto eligible lists while other departments, departments were waiting to also utilize the same list. That tells me the same list is alive. It's alive it, gets, well, it, yes. it gets to live elsewhere. That's correct. Right. That's correct. Okay. If I could comment on the previous sure. uh, issue with uh, Commissioner Devine and um, my, my preference would be to leave the language as is. Uh, I, I, think, uh, I think the way it's written is, uh, is such that it provides me the discretion to, you know, if I believe someone is taking too long, I can step in and, and you know, prior to, you know, sort of automatically repealing a certification, I can then say, you know, come on, move it along, please. Um, but if we were to say, you know, it must be repealed after a certain period of time or to give, you know, these hard and fast deadlines, I, I prefer to give our appointing authorities, our, our departments, a little, little more flexibility. Um, anything can happen. I mean, I can, I can create a list today and, you know, walk into the city manager's office tomorrow and she might tell me, you know, we have a budget issue right now. Uh, we got to stop you know, all the hiring for the next three months or whatever, you know, things like this happen. It happens in government, it happens, you know, to our budgets all the time. So I, I think the way it's written, even though this is, I keep saying this is a rare circumstance, I think this, uh, this provides the organization, the departments, uh, uh, appropriate discretion and flexibility to, uh, uh, to, you know, address these problems and not, not have to, any hard and fast deadlines on, on individuals. And believe me, we and my staff, after we work so hard on these recruitment processes, um, it is absolutely in our best interest to ensure that those departments do act upon these, these, uh, these uh, appointments. And when they don't, uh, it, uh, it, it can be a problem. But again, the way this is written, um, I, think, uh, I think it provides you know, sufficient discretion for me to address any types of delays with those departments. Uh, and certainly in this specific example where another department is waiting on a list, um, you know, I can communicate with that department that's holding the, the certification and, you know, see why it's taking so long. Uh, if they need an extension, I'll grant it. If it's not reasonable, I can say, hey, sorry, you lost your opportunity. I'm going to take that from, from you, Mr. Public Works Director, and give it to Parks and Rec. So I, I it would be my preference to leave it as okay. is. Okay, go ahead. I, I see that uh, very noble of you to take the heat, because otherwise, if you did a hard, fast deadline, another department gains the employee. I could see uh, uh, the opposite of harmony within 
uh, the city in between departments, uh, I would agree with you. Thank you. Okay. Now it's my turn uh, to ask a couple of question, uh, questions. Um, so I, I have, um, first of all, I think we can fix this with just fixing the wording a little bit. I think it will, it will work. But again, I want to I have a question. If in a, there's none in the city, tomorrow is going to be 20 emails from different people saying uh, which authority, appointing authority you're talking about. And an appointing authority decides, I don't like who's on this list. I'm doing nothing on this. And in 10 days, well, you repeal the list, which is what I wanted you to do. That's where I have a problem because I think that there has to be one other checks or balances with that process. And that's the reason I said, because it happens so rarely, it happens probably once every four years or so, maybe once every two years, that for this to come in front of us and for it to say, here's what happened, disappointing authority didn't decide they don't want it for, this is the reason for it, they have to come in here and explain. And then we, we say yes, and then you do what you need to do at that point. Because it happens so rarely. Now, if I would be okay if we do the following, it says Director of Human Resources may repeal and reassign a certification from one appointing authority to another who has held the certificate for at least 10 working days. That I don't have a problem with. Because then it specifically says what the research shows from Ms. Ms. Warpetian. Actually, Ms. Warpetian, thank you. Uh, if I may, if I may sure. very briefly. The Ms. Warpetian's research further down below in that paragraph says, to repeal or cancel an existing certification to one department so that another department could move ahead and with sure. making an appointment off of that particular list. So That's why don't we just make that yes. very clear in I this would, particular I would list. welcome that. I have no problem with that. Then it gives you exactly what you need. It, do, it takes away that uncertainty of just getting it repealed because they just didn't want to do anything with it. And it says... They can repeal and reassign it to any department if one appointing authority doesn't do anything for 10 days, and then you can reassign it to another. And then you can still have extension of time. And you can have the extension of time, 100%. Maybe granted by the director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't have any problems with that. This takes it away. This incorporates the research in here and takes away a little bit of uncertainty that you can just do it. If, if, if you can assign it to somebody else, then with all respect, just do it. But just to say human rights may repeal a, a certification from an appointing authority who has held it for 10 days without making an appointment is so broad and it's so open-ended that I have a problem with it. If it says the director of human rights may repeal and reassign a certification from one appointing authority to another who has held the certification for at least 10 working days without making an appointment, I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. Not even reassigned, so that another department could move ahead. Then, then the other department right. could move ahead. Yeah. I mean, the reassignment would be that so you it can... Becomes, at that point, it becomes open. Other departments can buy for That's that. That's it. Yeah. Because That's it good. says repeal and reassign. Are you okay with that? Yeah, that would work. That would work. Yeah. Again, that goes to the real, really the intent of this uh, Exactly. Section. Yeah. Exactly, which is may perfect. I, may I propose that the exact language that is the product of the research sure. be incorporated sure. because it's, it appears to be it, very complete. Because why, don't, why, don't says, you, why don't you read it? Uh, um, so it, it would now section, section seven, repeal of certification would read, the director of human resources may repeal or cancel an existing certification to one department, department slash appointing authority so that another department slash appointing authority could move ahead with making an appointment off of that particular list, period. Second. And then the rest would, would continue, the rest of the, the language. The extension of the time may be granted by director yeah, of the universe. Right. That was your motion, right? And I second. There's a motion, there's a second. Any other discussion? Yeah, I, oh, I just have okay. to put on the record. That Hold on one second. On very limited occasions, I do support uh, strenuously our director, and I think the provision as written gives him discretion, uh, which is not constrained. Um, there would be instances, and I appreciate the contribution, the language, the extraordinary language, 
uh, proposed by our chair. Uh, no criticism of the language, except that I think that this particular provision could be applied and might be beneficially applied in other circumstances beyond just uh, decertification uh, or repeal of a certification for the purpose of allowing another appointing authority the opportunity to appoint from a list. As I have suggested in my earlier conversation, it is theoretically possible that such a certification could stand the test of time for a year or so, uh, regardless of whether or not any other appointing uh, authority had any interest in the list at all. So allowing our director the discretion at some point to say, enough is enough, I want this list uh, decertified appears to be appropriate. Any other discussion? There's a motion, there's a second, and we have roll call, please. Commissioner Minukin? Yes. Commissioner Kazarian? Yes. Commissioner McFarley? No. Commissioner Devine? Yes. Chair Carrion? Yes. All right. Uh, what's next? Report. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Chair, uh, members of the commission, the only item we have are the uh, uh, past due evaluation reports. Uh, as you can see, we have. Uh, no second or no third notices. Uh, it's like 10 first notices and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About uh, 11 departments that uh, have no uh, past due evaluations at all. So kudos to them. Right. I'm going to go ahead and read the name of the ones that don't have a past due ev evaluation. City Attorney's Office, City Clerk's Office, City Manager's Office, City Treasurer's Office, Finance, Glendale Water and Power, Human Resources, Innovative Performance and Audit, Library, Police, and Public Works. Any comments? Okay, what's next? Civil Service Commission, staff comments. Any comments from anyone? I do have one comment. Uh, I was on vacation and, got, and I received the sad um, news that uh, Ms. Hunanian was not going to be with us anymore. Uh, which makes me very sad. She's an incredible, incredible co contributor to the city. She's done an incredible job in the city, and uh, she will be definitely, definitely missed. I'm sorry I wasn't able to go to the uh, retirement kind of luncheon, uh, but please, on behalf of me, and I'm sure the commissioners wish her the best of luck in whatever she decides to do. Thank you, Thank you Chair uh, uh, Karen, and uh, I, I concur completely with you. Uh, it was a huge, huge loss. Um, I do want to correct you, and this is not a retirement. She's not, oh. not quite the, that age. <laughs> not a retirement from her position uh, in human resources. Is that bad? Is Maybe that better? she won the lottery. We don't uh, know. <laughs> but yeah, she was a, an outstanding uh, contributor to this uh, organization, to my staff, and um, you know, a, a very valuable individual, uh, actually a practicing attorney, licensed attorney who uh, chose to work in HR for a number of years and, and uh, made a great contribution here. And uh, I, I appreciate you mentioning uh, that. Um, one of those uh, positions that's you know, just irreplaceable. And uh, um, it, it, it does uh, leave my department at a bit of a, a loss, but uh, we'll, we'll certainly move on and, and do our best at, uh, at filling these positions and uh, moving forward. So but thank you. Thank you for recognizing Manya. Um, okay, what's next? Closed session, items A and B, public employee discipline. Okay, uh, we, this, these are closed sessions. We are going to go off camera. We will not be reporting out today. So for purposes of the TV, we, this meeting is concluded.